Hello, welcome back. So it's been quite a while since I made a video, but I have been playing a little bit of RS recently, uh, kind of enjoying it, mainly just sticking to my good old Brago, a little bit of AOD, and then some of the clue updates that we've just had as well seem to be providing a good bit of entertainment for myself and a few others. So I thought I would make a video. I've had most of these clips uh, for quite a while, but it's going to be sort of episode two of Tips and Tricks. It will be quite heavily Virago based, but hey, everyone's watched my channel for that, so you know what to expect. Um, if I have any other PVM related things, I'd also like to make a few videos around uh, interfacing and maybe possibly a couple of podcasty style things. Uh, so let me know what you think about that. It might be something that I can just do not requiring so much game time, um, but I can just sort of record a video or two here or there um, and just put it up on the channel. I'd like to keep it quite PVM based. So, for example, how could Jagex look to make the PVM uh, system and combat a little bit more intuitive? That's just an example. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep this as short and sweet as possible because I've just done about six recordings of this and it's super long. So, the point I'm picking up here is reprisal timing and wasting excess damage. So your timing of reprisal needs to be adequate to the number of people in your kill. If you're in a duo, you can reprisal nice and early, and you know that it's going to have an effect. If you're in a trio, for example, make sure you stagger your reprisal a little bit later on after the team split's been activated. That way you don't waste the damage, because if you're in a trio, three of you wild magicking, snapshotting, whatever it needs to be, is enough to push it back. Any reprisal that hits on the same tick is completely wasted. As you can see in the clip here, myself and my partner do it in a slightly different tick. And we get a really nice five square push out of this. Yeah, I get a sick tendril to push the extra square, but we would have easily had four squares anyway. So obviously the question then is, how do you learn this timing? Well, the main thing you're looking for is how much damage have you done to Virago without it moving before the team split activates and how many people in your kill. They are the two contributing factors. As you can see into this clip, we're duo, and this was from quite a while ago, and it's not particularly well set up for this rotation. I sun very late, but what I do do correctly is I note that as the team split activates, Virago pushes us backwards. Therefore, this means that the amount of damage we need to do is very small to push him back. So I hold my reprisal slightly later, auto while magic out, and then I know that my reprisal will carry that second push, and it allows me to get my second threshold off, um, and cause stool, which enables my BT to do an extra ability, and we actually get three squares of push before any blue bombs have hit us. This is just a really good example of sort of holding your prize a little bit later. If you knew that, for example, you just pushed Rago back, uh, as you went into the team split, you would want to reprisal super early so that your reprisal hits with your wild magic and auto, hopefully causing stool. I hope I didn't overcomplicate things by explaining why and the reasonings and the scenario behind this, but it's just such a simple and easy thing to do that I see so many people make the mistakes on Twitch when I do get the chance to tune in. It's honestly small things like this that can make the difference between you doing really fast, speedy, efficient duos or just doing semi-slow and quite sloppy ones. Okay, so I'm just going to add two more small but very effective tips for Phase 5 Virago and just make this video entirely about sort of pushback and stool. So the first little thing here is something I like to call sneaking thresholds. Basically, the way it works is... If you and your partner threshold together, you have much bigger chance to actually push Virago back. If you one of you does it and then the other, then not really much happens because although you do enough you do the same amount of damage, you don't get the stool, which allows you the extra time to do more abilities. You, you can see here that I wild magic whilst my partner is asphyxiating and he holds his asphyxiate. That gives us enough stool for us to get for me to get a dragon breath off and still get back to 100% adrenaline, which is what I need to do my reprisal and then Cade afterwards. That's kind of in the must. You have to get that set rotation. You can't do the thresh if you know you're not going to get there. But what it does do is give us more time and damage. And finally, then the third skill is knowing that you need to run to be max distance to get the best out of your Cade. Blue bombs hit first or earlier if you're closer to Virago. So I know that I can't actually make it 
to 100% if I'm standing where I am. But if I run to the back of the room, despite the fact that my ability doesn't actually trigger, but I still get the adrenaline from it to get to 100, I know that I can K on tick with the blue hitting me. Not only is this beneficial because I w otherwise I would have had the blue do the damage to me, but this is just generally good practice because, as you'll see now, I cade and then I actually get three blues before the reflect in my cade and then I get two out of the three after slash during reflect. This means that I then res, which is obviously you can't do if the bleed is on you, but other than that, you're fine to do and then you've caded five out of the six blues, which reduces your pushback massively. Every extra square is so much more beneficial. If you want to take this to the extra level, you can use Spellbook Swap to Disruption Shield and Cade all six. The amount of ease this creates in a duo and time to de DPS is so, um, like, it's just incredible. I hope this helps you guys and explains some of the sort of things that you see your favorite streamers do on Twitch every day that sets them apart from the rest. Uh, and I hope to see you next time for some more Supreme Tips with JMJ.